Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today's video is part five of the SQL injection series that we had started a few weeks back. For those that are just jumping in today, make sure you go ahead and start back at part one, pretty much providing an overview of what we would cover over the next five weeks. Part two was an introduction to SQL, the syntax, the, ba the, the backend database, and stuff like that. Part three, we actually went over the installation and configuration of the MySQL server on a Linux server. And then part four, we actually created the web application that you could see in front of you. And then today's video is actually going to be us attacking this web application using SQL injection, not only manually, but we are going to use Burp Suite and SQL Map. All right, so to start this off, for those that are not familiar with it, just to show you or highlight that the database works. So we got our username and password. And when we log in, we're going to get the login success message. And then if we fail the login, we'll get login failed. So SQL injection will pretty much allow us to inject certain syntax that is not being validated by the server, allowing us to treat it or allowing the server to treat it as SQL syntax. So what I mean by that is if we were to do, let's say, a jack and then apostrophe pretty much closing out that that the first part of that query and then let's put a comment for the MySQL so this is going to comment out everything after Jack so if we log in without even providing the correct password we should get a login success so to kind of break that down for you before we dive into this further I've opened up the pretty much pulled up the query that is on the backend server Granted, in most cases, you're not going to know this, so you just kind of have to guess or understand how it works, so then you could kind of put in the syntax to how you see fit. Um, but to kind of highlight what exactly is going on, let's go ahead and copy this. All right, so the original query is up here. So we're saying select all from users where username equals the input that we pass for username and password of password but for that query or for that injection that we just put a minute ago really what we did was we put an apostrophe to close it out so now it's blank actually we did jack sorry so we did jack apostrophe and then we did the comments on or the hashtag or pound sign however you want to call it so what that does in mysql will now comment out the rest of this. So this no longer is part of the query. I hope that makes sense. But in the end, all we want is to return a true statement by passing something in the username or even the password. We want to pass a true statement to validate authentication. So in this case, Jack does exist as a username. We're saying where username equals Jack, and then that's it. We don't care about password because we commented that out. Another one that we could do, let's say we wanted to do, or just to prove that we want to do a, um, a true statement, right? So we'll do Jack and one equals one. Again, we'll do the comment sign. Login success. It's going to be the same thing here. So if we went over here and one equals one. Again, that's a true statement. But now let's say if we did two, one does not equal two, login fail. That's because this is not a true statement anymore. Now if we change this verbiage, this should work to or to get login success. Because again, this is a true statement. It's saying, does Jack exist or does one equal two? Jack does exist, so this is in fact true. In many cases, you could also even just do like something like this. So we're just saying blank username or one equals one which is again is a true statement in many cases this will authenticate so with that being said we could also perform uh, different techniques and stuff like that so let's say we want to maybe guess if this username exists right so let's do jack and sleep and type today so we're saying Jack user, if Jack user exists, sleep five seconds is essentially what that, what that is saying. 
And as you can see, it is sleeping. It is taking its time. Uh, now, if we want to do, let's say, admin, we're going to get a quick response because this does not, this is not true. So it's not going to even perform Another thing this. that we could do is we could perform a substring. We're going to, we could pretty much look at each character inside of the username to kind of brute force and guess. Granted, we're not going to do this today. I'm actually going to cover this in another video, but it is kind of cool to talk about. I posted the query or the injection point up here, but let's go ahead. I have it pulled in here as well. All right, so as you can see here, again, we are using union select. The first value is going to be null, and then we are going to get the substring, which is a character inside of the username. And then we're going to look at the first character or the second character and then we're only going to look from second character and that's it specified by the number one and then from here we are going to compare it so we're going to say as exact string from user where substring again 21 equals a and then we're going to limit that to one response so if we were to post this or paste this into the username, we'll get login success. So if we were to change this to, let's say, D, we're going to get login failed. But knowing this, you can see how strong this is. So essentially, we could brute force this using like a Python script real quick. And we would essentially just iterate through this position right here. And then we would iterate through this as well pretty much cycle through the entire alphabet and maybe even all the digits like zero through nine and then depending on the response if maybe we see if we know what the expected response is like login failed maybe we could do like an if statement saying if does if login fail does not exist then do this maybe append that character to a, a dictionary or a list and this way we could build out that password because it's going to go by character by character and by the end of that, once it's all done, we will have a the username or even the password, depending on what we're looking for. So that's pretty much going to cover the manual injection. I tried to cover just the, the basis pretty much as to how it would work. Granted, in many cases, maybe you would do a few injection statements here or there, kind of see poke around, see what's going on. But in many scenarios, from what I understand, is people are going to be automating this process using Burp or even SQL map. So the first tool that we're going to start with is going to be Burp Suite. So for those that are not familiar with that, it is a way to automate this process. We could essentially inject a list and it's going to take a payload and inject it one by one and, and generate a response and telling us what, to, what, what, what happened from that injection. So let me go ahead and turn on Foxy Proxy, which is pretty much a, a proxy that's going to act as the middleman. We're going to drop the, these. First, we're going to hit login and get passed through our po uh, Foxy proxy. All right, here's our intercept. So, we're going to take this and we're going to send this to intruder. Head over to the intruder tab. And then down here, just for now, we just want to focus on one. So, we're just going to go ahead and clear this. So, this is going to be the injection points. So, these little symbols right here. As you, as you can see what I did on the right side, you can go ahead and add or clear or whatever the case may be. You could even do auto. That's all you have to do here. Pretty straightforward. Then head over to payloads. So the main thing that you want to care about here is going to be the payload options. This is where you're going to send a list. You could also add your own. So let's say if we did, we could do um, that right there. We'll just leave that there for now. Um, but we could also go into our sec lists. So for those that are not familiar, look up uh, GitHub, GitHub for sec list. This is a great list for um, everything security. Uh, SQLI. And then we're just going to go ahead and just pass the quick. All right. So then we will. That's it. So let's go ahead and start attack. I do have the community edition, so it is going to be slow. Gives us that warning. And we'll just kind of sit here and let this run through. All right, so we pretty much let it run for a little bit. Uh, we don't need to do the whole thing, obviously. 
to get the idea of what's going on here. So as you can see, this is the payloads that we had injected or that we loaded over here on the left. Uh, one by one, it's going to go through the username. It's going to pass that through. It's going to give us a status code, which is the HTTP status code. So 200 is a good response saying that we had not have any errors or anything like that or redirects. And then over here is the length, which is probably the biggest thing that you want to look out for after looking at the status. So if we see something different, maybe that would kind of give us an inclination as to something changed between the different responses. So for instance, if we know that this is generating a login failed response, like this, let's go around, we don't see anything here. But if we go to the top for the one that we had created ourselves, because we know it works, response, we got login to success. So that's just an easy way to automate the process. And these, these, I mean, you could get lists that have hundreds of statements and stuff like that. And you just pass it through, do that passively, maybe while you're doing other uh, vector or attack vectors or different um, points of attack. Um, but that's pretty much all you need to know as far as this goes. And then the next part of this video, we are going to cover SQL map. All right, so I had opened up the another tab for our web application. Uh, so first things first, before we go ahead and run the SQL map program, we're going to want to capture a request through Burp Suite so we can write it to a file. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So we log in. Here's our request that we just sent. We're going to go to uh, action and then copy to file. Go ahead and save it over lab.request. And then we'll go ahead and head over to the terminal. So I already have the code right here, or the command I should say. So from left to right, we have SQL map. The dash R option is going to specify the request, which is lab.request that we just saved. DBS is specifying the, the back end that we're going to be attacking, which is MySQL. You do not need this, but this is something that we already know. So let's go ahead and use it. And then the last two things is level and risk. Both could be adjusted depending on how much you want the program to attack, um, which you'll see in a minute is it does perform a lot of attacks. So we'll go ahead and usually a good word of advice is maybe to start from one one and work your way up. Since it's just my own thing, our own little lab, just go ahead and do whatever you would like. Let's attack this thing. I'm just going to kind of let it run through. All right, so the first thing that came up saying the post parameter appears to be injectable. Uh, so it looks like that backend DVMS is MySQL. Do you want to skip the test, uh, the payloads for other DMS? Yes, we know it's MySQL, so there's no need to. So we're going to skip it. Uh, it's pretty much saying it's not injectable with no values. Do you want to try random integer? Let's go for it. That's going to verify that it is not a false positive. All right, so it's saying it is confirming that the user is injectable. So do you want to keep testing for others? No, we don't really care at this moment. We're just going to do one just to kind of highlight exactly the SQL map program. It also shows you that the payload that it had used and found injectable. Uh, the last thing it's pretty much saying you want to optimize the delay responses. We'll just go ahead and hit no for now. All right, so that took a little bit longer than expected. I am not sure if I, uh, that's because I've selected no up here. Usually I do hit yes, but I just thought let's just do no for whatever reason. Um, but as you can see, it has finished. So at the bottom, we can see that we retrieved the various databases inside of this particular server. Uh, the one that we, we are concerned about is gonna be YouTube Lab. Granted, you can see that we do not have any tables yet. So the next command that we wanna do Again, you could have done this from the very beginning, but I'm just breaking it down. So we're going to specify the database that we just found. So YouTube lab, and then we're going to specify the tables and that's going to look for tables. And we're going to let that run for a minute. All right. So now as you can see, we have the tables where we have the table, I should say from YouTube lab. So pretty much now with that, with the amount of injection that we have or at our hands, we can just go ahead and dump that table to get all the information inside of that. So let's go ahead and hit, we're going to specify the table now with capital T. And we're going to say user, and then we're going to specify dump. And again, we'll just let that run for a few minutes and hopefully we get the username and password. All right, so just within like five minutes, we now have dumped the 
uh, user table, and we have uh, Jack, password one two three four, and we also have Joe, password one two three four. So at this point, we have pretty much exploited it from every angle, and we have dumped the entire table, getting us multiple users to authenticate into the web application. So that's pretty much going to cover it for today's video. I wanted to pretty much cover manual injection, burp suite, and SQL map. I didn't want to dive too far into it. Uh, this is pretty much a good overview of has how you would use it um, to get you guys started. Maybe in the future, we could, like I said with Burp, we could dive in a little bit further and get some more details, uh, explain the processes that I use and stuff like that. Um, but for the time being, I'm going to close this video out. I hope you guys were able to take something away. I enjoyed this a lot, and I do plan on doing a few more videos, at least covering maybe the blind SQL injection with a Python script that I'm going to develop for that. Uh, and then a few other ideas that I had that came up throughout this series. Um, but with that being said, as always, never stop learning.